excitement about this Superfly Cadillac ever since I was a kid. This car does make it a lot easier to look cool, though. Dude, without a doubt, are you kidding me? I love this car. Counting Cars is a reality TV show whose popularity extends beyond the shores of the United States. The series started as the third spinoff of another reality TV show, Pawn Stars. It's filmed in Las Vegas, and it chronicles the activities of the crew at Count's Customs, which is owned by the controversial Danny Coker, aka The Count. I know that feeling. There's nothing quite like it, man, and I know they're going to enjoy this car for years to come. And that's a feeling that I know and I love, and they are some happy people. Following the same format as many other car shows, Counting Cars documents the conflicts and drama between Danny Coker and his team as they restore and modify classic automobiles and motorcycles. And boy, there was a load of drama and bad blood between the cast members. So much drama that several members left the show for various reasons. Despite the drama, which fans lived for during its prime, Counting Cars enjoyed great viewership and a good rating. With that success, it ran for 10 seasons, from 2012 to 2021. However, no new season has been approved by History Channel after the 10th season, and the fans have been left to wonder why. So join us as we reveal the real reason why Counting Cars ended. Without the counts, there would be no Counting Cars. The story goes that Danny was running Counts Customs when the opportunity to sign for his own reality TV series fell on his lap. Reality TV series are highly rated in the United States and across the world for being not just entertaining but also educational. Danny saw the show as an opportunity to put Count's Customs on the map. The opportunity to star in Counting Cars and have it focus on Count's Customs was made available to Danny because of the time he spent on Pawn Stars. Oh, you're kidding me. Everything in here is something that I am freaked out over. Well, you mentioned, I mean, you mentioned the 59 Chevrolet, here's a stock one. After becoming a reoccurring face on Pawn Stars, he was approached by the producers and offered the opportunity to head his own show. Danny's decision to sign the deal that made Count's Cousins an integral part of the show couldn't have gone any better. County Cars started as the third spinoff from Pawn Stars after American Restoration and Cajun Pawn Stars, but of all the spinoffs, it is the most watched and loved by fans. The show followed the same format used by American Restoration, but with some twists of its own that involved the cast members. Over the years while the show ran, Danny has assembled an exceptional team of talented car enthusiasts, and every episode of the show displays the skills and expertise of each team member. While the fans like to watch the intriguing processes that goes into making and modifying automobiles and motorcycles, the drama makes things even more interesting. The drama, fights, and allegations have led to lawsuits, court cases, and some of the cast members became evicted from the show. One peculiar case is that of Joseph Frontiera. Joseph started working at Count Customs as a restoration expert and a mechanic in 2013 until he was evicted from the show, and all records of him ever being on the show were erased. The drama surrounding Joseph Frontiera would be the first drama in the show that would result in a lawsuit. The shop filed a civil lawsuit against Joseph, claiming that he mismanaged company funds totaling $75,000 and used it to finance his personal Range Rover and airfare. The lawsuit stated that Joseph didn't just mismanage the shop's funds, he also made signature stamps of Danny Coker and Kevin Mack without their consent. He used those stamps to stamp checks in their absence. In the lawsuit, Counts Customs also mentioned that Joseph had failed to pay the company's tax, and eventually, this lawsuit brought up more dirt on Joseph. Frontiera started working for Counts Customs in June 2013, and court records show that he was charged in September of the same year for felony theft of more than $3,500 that took place in August. A warrant had been issued for Frontiera's arrest, but it was not served because he lives in Florida. Knowing everything about your crew members can be hard when you have a large crew. When Counts Customs started seeing irregularities in the shop's accounts and some of the clients' accounts and projects, they conducted a background check on Frontiera. And that showed that Frontiera has a history of fraud and embezzlement with a former employer in Florida. Frontiera's act of crime blew up a dust of scandal that threatened to drag counting cars in the mud. So he was exterminated from the show. Not only that, he's also not listed on the show's internet movie data database page anymore, and every evidence of him ever being on the show has been erased from the show's history. The Frontier case would not be the only lawsuit that Counting Cars and Counts Customs would have to weather. 
Counts Customs was involved in another lawsuit that involved a classic Ford Mustang. Jeanette and Paul Hurt sued Counts Customs for withholding their $50,000 and failing to deliver a vehicle by the promised date. Jeanette approached Counts Custom in 2013, asking the shop to help her build a classic Ford Mustang so she could gift it to her husband on his birthday. The Hertz claimed that an employee of Counts Customs, Scott Jones, told them that the shop could procure and rebuild a 1967 Ford Mustang Coupe for $50,000. The cost estimates sent from Jones included $11,000 to buy a restoration vehicle and $39,000 for labor. They said that Scott Jones told them that since the build will be featured on an episode of Counting Cars, an extra $20,000 would be provided by the show's producers to subsidize the cost. However, after the couple agreed to pay $50,000, they were informed that the vehicle would no longer be featured on Counting Cars, but will continue working on it as per scheduled. They were also told that Scott Jones no longer worked at Counting Cars. I'm Scott. I'm the project manager here at Counts Customs. I want to give you a quick tour of our buildings. And if you didn't know, Scott Jones was a bona fide member of Counts Customs and appeared in Counting Cars' first two seasons, but his exit from the show was silent and unannounced. With Jones now absent from the show and the shop, the deal the Hertz made with the shop was broken, and the cost of the restoration car saw an increase from $11,000 to $30,000. Aside from this increase, the shop delivered something entirely different from the 1967 Ford Mustang Coupe they ordered. Counts Custom failed to complete the job on time and didn't build what was requested, so they asked for a refund, which never came. Well, these lawsuits were not the only issues that plagued Counts Customs and Counting Cars. There were a lot of things that were wrong with the show, and all these things contributed to its end. To make the TV show engaging and captivating for viewers, the writers of the show altered and modified many of the events and stories. While these changes made the show visually appealing and exciting, they also resulted in some negative perception for Counts Customs, Danny Coker, and his team. A lot of things on the show are actually staged. One of them is the fact that almost everything on the show looks too good to be true. The show depicts the staff of the shop as always abiding by the rules, helpful, and you'd hardly see anyone looking disgruntled. The owners of the cars always look satisfied, content, and amazed at their cars on camera. However, the online reviews about Counts Customs tell a different story. The lawsuit with the Hertz is just one of several examples. Most of the buyers have left reviews ranting about the poor service or how they were charged unfairly. Others have complained about the fact that the shop doesn't pay attention to or care about cars that are not featured on the show. Sure, these reviews could be false and may have been concocted by jealous competitors, but there's so much controversy surrounding Counts Customs and the reality TV show that there might be some truth to it. Another thing fans have found wrong with the show is that there is too little value shown during screen time. Most of the real work is seldom shown, and the show focuses more on drama and hyped conversations. Danny always plays the broke guy card and acts like there's no money in the shop and they have to make do with a tight budget, but Danny's lifestyle away from the show tells a different story. A deep dive into the shop's finances has revealed that the shop lacks a fixed budget for the projects, and the scenes where Danny gets scolded for spending too much money on projects are all subtle acts for the viewers. Without the drama and stage stories, Counting Cars may not have done as well as it did, and despite these faults, Counting Cars enjoyed huge success. It had an average rating of 6.8 points when it debuted, but like all good things, it had to come to an end. Now that Counting Cars has stopped airing, the shop, Counts Customs, is still in business and still does some amazing work for several well-to-do clients in the United States.